So number 18 then from paper one of the 2021 National 5 Maths Resource Paper, a four mark question. It's a calculations in a circle question. So what's it got? It describes this shape. There's a rectangle. It gives you the size of the rectangle, 12 by 30 millimetres. There's a circle. It gives you the size of the circle, diameter 20. Except they overlap by a bit. There's an overlap here. And you have to calculate the total length. So that total length won't be the height of the rectangle and the height of the circle being its diameter because there's this overlap. So for four marks, what's its length? Well, calculations in circles. There's two types of calculations in circles questions. There's the ones where you've got the turning parts, the arcs, the sectors, the angles. Those are fractions of a circle. This one's got the straight line in a circle, a point join, a line joining two points in the circumference. It's got a chord. That's the Pythagoras one. Look for a right angle triangle. Because to get the total height, it will be the 30, and it will be this part, which is 10 the radius, but it's this little bit here. That's the part you really want to know. And you'll get that from this right angle triangle. So I'll just pop that over here. So extract this little right angle triangle, because this is the triangle you're going to use in your calculation. So I'll give that a name, call it whatever you like. I'll call that X. I don't know that part, but I do know these two. Because you have to know two out of the three. Because the distance from C to any point in circumference is a radius, and the radius, I'll put a wee note, the radius is a half of 20. So the radius is 10 millimetres, so that part's 10. And if that radius there, part of the radius, if it's at right angles, and it'll have to be because I want it to be in a vertical line, if it's at right angles to that chord, which is horizontal, then it must bisect it. So that distance must be half of the 12. So that distance must be six. Now you could go straight into your answer if you recognise You've got a multiple of a three, four, five triangle. No, I've not got them to scale here because obviously that side looks smaller than that when it's just the way I've drawn the picture. Then that would be eight straight away because it's double a three, four, five. Two threes, two fives, so two fours. But failing that, if you don't recognise that, you can just say, right, how do I work out a shorter side? Well, it will be the longer side minus the other short side. So 10 squared minus six squared. That gets a mark. So that's 100 minus the 36, which is 64. So x is the square root of 64, so x is 8, which you could have had straight away. So x is 8, I'm not bothered putting the millimetres in. Now there was a mark to begin with, because that was the critical part, realising you'd use this right angle triangle, extracting that right angle triangle and finding the relevant sizes. Now you can get the length. Because the length could be made up of the radius, which is 10, plus this total distance you just worked out, which was 8, plus the height of the rectangle, which was 30, so that's 48. The length is 48 millimetres. Number 19 then, the last question in paper one of the 2021 National 5 resource paper, Solve this equation by factorising for three marks. So let's emphasise that by factorising. It is a quadratic equation. So you could have put down the quadratic formula even though you didn't have a calculator because you know, since it says it can be solved by factorising, that in the quadratic formula when you've got the square root, the discriminant inside the square root, that would have been a perfect square. So it would have been possible to do it all without a calculator, but it says factorise it, so I've got to factorise it. OK, a bracket times a bracket. So it'll be so many x in a number, so many x in a number. Now, the way that works is the first times the first makes the first. The last times the last makes the last. Well, that's easy. If that's a 5, it can only be a 1 and a 5. But the first times the first makes a 6. I've got two possibilities. I'll just put them here. It could be 6 times 1, or it could be 3 times 2. And it could be them either way round. So there's like four possibilities. And the only way you can choose between those four possibilities is by finding the one that makes the 13. Because this says that the outer product, that's the mixture now, the first times the first makes the first, the last times the last makes the last, there's still the mixtures, the inner product and the outer product. The inner pair and the outer pair have to make a 13. And with that minus there, it means that to make to have a difference of 13. 
So in other words, which one of these could I multiply the 5 by to have a difference of 13? You can just try them all in order. 30 and 1, no. 5 and 6, no. 15 and 2, that's the 1. That's what I want to use. I want the 3 and the 5 to pair up. So that's the outer pair. So that's the 3x and that's the 2x. Now, getting that part, which was all of it really, is the first mark. Now just get the signs correct. I want a plus 13. So if I've got a 15 and a 2, I want the 15 to be positive and the 2 to be the minus. So that finishes that off now. So there's the two marks and now I can solve it. If two numbers multiply to give 0, then one of them must be 0. Now you could set it out or you could just go straight to the solution. You could say, well, either 3x minus 1 is 0 and then solve it, or this bracket was responsible for it coming to 0. So 2x plus 5 is 0 and then solve it. So you could put that down. I've put it down now, but I wouldn't have put it down. And then from that you can get to the answer. Take the 1 across, 1 divide by the 3, so that's a third. Take the 5 across, negative 5. Take the 2 across and divide, negative 5 upon 2. So there's the two answers.